Okay, so here's my deep thought for today. Last night we were sitting on a plane for a long time, leaving, landing, there was a lot of waiting. And when we landed there, we had to wait in the runway because we couldn't get to a gate, la la la. So we were sitting in the runway, it had just rained and my daughter was sitting in the cell phone lot waiting for us. And she said, oh, there's the most beautiful rainbow. And I looked out my window and I couldn't see it. And then she wrote and said, oh, there's a double rainbow, it's amazing. And I looked out the window and I couldn't see it. And then I looked over to the other side of the plane and there was a lot of people like taking pictures and looking out their little windows. And I thought, those guys can see it out the other window on the other side of the plane. And of course I thought, how does this apply to the gospel? And I thought this, just because I couldn't see it didn't mean it wasn't there. And I had to believe that they could see it. And I had the picture from my daughter that she sent me and it was beautiful. And I looked on that picture and thought, oh, what a beautiful rainbow. And I didn't say, oh, well, I didn't see it. I don't think it's real. Or because I can't see it, I'm mad. And I'm not going to believe this picture that she sent me because I didn't personally see it. And I think there's a lot of things that we can learn about that, about faith and believing and trusting. But I also got to thinking about the scriptures about spiritual gifts. And so I did a little bit of study on spiritual gifts today. And the first thing I learned as I studied that spiritual gifts are given to people who are obedient, who are trying to do what they can, because all the gifts of the Spirit come from the Holy Ghost. So if we don't have the Holy Ghost in abundance in our life, we're not going to be able to exercise or feel or maybe even receive these spiritual gifts. And so one of the things I think is super important, like always that I talk about all the time, is that we need to be doing all we can to have the Spirit in our life. And sometimes that isn't just keeping the commandments. Sometimes we have to even go above that where we're reading our scriptures or we're out serving and we're doing things to help actively keep the spirit in our life. And when we're doing that, then we're promised that we will be given uh, certain spiritual gifts. And uh, the very first one that I thought of that this whole situation with not seeing the rainbow was this, and I've got to read it. It says, and this is in Doctrine and Covenants uh, uh, that, 46. It's in Doctrine and Covenants 46, um, verses 13 and 14. You can also find um, gifts of, different gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians. Um, but it says, To some is given by the Holy Ghost to know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he was crucified for the sins of the world. And to others it is given to believe on their words that they also might have eternal life if they continue faithful. And somewhere in maybe many of our brains, we've thought that that's a secondary gift. Like people who have the gift to know that Jesus is the Christ and to believe, like they're the better people. And the gift to believe those people, maybe we think, well, that's not as cool or something like that, but that's a gift. To believe in other people's belief is also a gift. And I think mostly all of our testimonies are based on that, right? I listened to a church talk that really touches me through the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm given the faith. These things just pop right out. I hate them. I have tiny little ear holes and they don't work. Um, but it's given to us at that point to believe in the person we listen to in conference, the person, whenever we're moved by a talk or a testimony or something, we are in essence, right? Given the gift to believe on the words of somebody else. And I think that, especially if you're struggling with your faith right now, I think search for this gift. Think of somebody that you love, that you admire, that you respect their testimony and ask the Lord, help me to believe their words right now. Help me to have the gift to believe the person that I know and love and respect. Help me to believe them for a while. And maybe that's our whole life. It says that. It says that we 
another is given to believe on their words that they also might have eternal life. So it doesn't say like, well, you're given their words until you get it on your own. That may be the gift that you have is that you don't need to see Jesus or whatever that you just can believe other people and that you can believe in the words that you hear. So maybe this week, if you're struggling, pick a mentor, pick somebody that you admire and that you love and then pray to the Lord, help me to have the gift to believe in their words and for it to be enough for me to recognize what a sweet gift it is that you're going to give me this gift to have faith on somebody else's beliefs for a while or maybe even for my whole life because that is a gift. We can't deny it. We have to be, sometimes I really think we have to just be content with looking at the picture on our phone that somebody else took and that we have to listen to somebody else's testimony and believe them and be grateful that we were able to hear that instead of that I wasn't the one on that side of the plane who saw it, but I was the one that was able to get this beautiful picture from my daughter and believe it. So that's my thought for today, that maybe we just have to realize how lucky we are to have people in our life that influence us for good and that it's a gift to be able to believe them and the things that they say. So hopefully that's a good message for you.